Hey guys, it's Lisa and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to make over a few items and we're going to start with this little magazine rack. Um, the, the feet were eat off of it. I mean, they were just rotted or something. So I had my husband to just remove the feet. So he just cut that flush on the bottom and I'm going to be adding these little feet. So I'm just going to use tight bond glue and I'm going to leave just enough room to put a couple dots of hot glue so that I'll have some immediate hold and then some um, permanent hold. And now that I've given those time to dry, now I'm going to paint this with two coats of the color sea glass. Um, this is a Dixie Belle color and if you watch me long you know I use it a lot. Uh, but I'm actually remodeling my bathroom and um, I say I am, my husband is. And um, I think I'm gonna uh, add this color in my bathroom. So um, I needed this little magazine rack because um, that's where my husband does his reading. So we needed something to put his reading material in. So um, I thought this little rack would be perfect for that. So the way I decorate my house is uh, more of a farmhouse with some antiques, I guess. Um, but in my bathroom, I think I want to do it more of a cottage style. So it's going to be more farmhouse chic, or uh, I guess that's what you would call it. And although this little magazine rack was in kind of rough condition, uh, I just really like the look of it. So. I think it will work perfectly. I like that it's short, and I like that it's uh, it's kind of chunky, and I actually like this little scalloped look on the top. So once I get it completely covered, and I've got two coats on it, and let that dry well, then I'm gonna add a stencil. And uh, I want this, like I said, to have more of a cottage look to it. So I thought this little stencil here would be good for that. And I wish I could link this stencil, but I've had this one for quite a while. I haven't used it that much, but I've had it for a very long time. So um, I'm, I'm not even sure, sure where I got it. But I put this stencil on both sides and I do it in the color buttercream and that's also a, a Dixie Belle color. And I actually made sure to put a couple of coats on this stencil so once I let the stencil dry, uh, actually I, I used a blow dryer on it and did another coat to make sure that it covered well. But like I said, I do this in the color buttercream and then once that dries well, uh, then I'm going to be adding a glaze to this one. And I, I use a Dixie Belle glaze and it's called, uh, the color is called Van Dyke Brown. And I like to use it on items like this instead of a brown wax uh, because I just like the tone that it gives it. It makes it look more aged. And in this case, uh, it gives this blue, almost more of a greenish blue look. Uh, but I do like that it warms this color up. So, and it, it really makes it look aged. So, um, so I use that glaze a lot. And uh, like I said, once this dries, I just kind of brush that glaze on and then wipe it off. Now, sometimes when I'm using a glaze or a, uh, or a dark wax, I'll use clear on it first to keep it from taking too harshly. But in this case, I want this to really look aged. So I almost want it to have a dirty look to it. And so I just brush a little of that on and I don't cover it well because uh, I don't feel like it needs covered well. When you wipe it off, you're gonna kind of rub all that into the areas that you haven't brushed it. So, um, I really like the difference that this is making in this color. So as you can see there on the top handle, it has a lot cooler blue color, and this really changes it up. And I'm sorry I'm not in frame well uh, with this. A lot of times when I'm working with larger items on my table, I, I don't get that whole item in frame, so I'll have to be more careful with that. 
But like I said, I just go over this with one coat and then uh, not even a complete coat and then just and then just wipe it off. And I really like the look that it gives this this blue. And like I said, it almost has more of a greenish blue look, look to it, but it definitely gives it more of an aged look. And then once I get this covered well and um, and wipe this off well, then uh, I'm gonna let it dry just a little and then I'm gonna take it outside and use my orbital sander because I wanna give it a really heavy distress. Because again, I want to make this look like it's really old. And you could clear coat this when it's done, but I'm not gonna do that because I feel like with that glaze, that's protection enough for me. Uh, but some people do like to seal it afterwards. But I really like that it looks aged and um, that was definitely the look that I was going for. And then for the next item, this is also going to go in my bathroom. And it's some more of these canisters that I've made over before, but I'm going to give these more of a simple look. So I wanted another place that I could add that uh, sea glass. Uh, and so all that I'm going to do here, because I want my jars to be clear. Now, I did make sure that all of these match, uh, but I want them to be clear because I like to put cotton balls and Q-tips and things like that in it. And I want to be able to see well into it. And so all I'm going to do is just paint these lids. So uh, I give them a good cleaning with some alcohol. And then, um, and then I'm gonna give them two coats of the color sea glass. And I also forgot to mention that I do um, use uh, a Dixie Bell product called Slick Stick on this because what that does is um, it just helps your paint adhere to a very slick surface and glass is about as slick as you can get, I think. So I just give it one coat of this slick stick and let that dry well. And you could also use just a clear matte spray of some kind. You could spray it with lacquer or any kind of clear coat first and that would help it stick also. You don't have to use this Dixie Belle product. But I just give it one coat of this, like I said, let it dry well, and then it's ready for the paint. And like I said, I'm going to be using the uh, color sea glass on this, so it is going to take two coats. And I think what would be really pretty on these is to paint the, the clear jar uh, in the color buttercream and then put some sort of, uh, maybe some sort of a decoupage on the front. I think that would be really pretty, but again, I want to be able to see into these jars, and since it's mine, I'm not going to be doing that. I'm just going to leave those jars clear, and if I don't like them, I can always go back later and paint them, but I think that I want to keep them the clear glass. So once I get two coats on these lids and let it dry well, then I'm also going to be using the uh, the glaze on this. So I'm going to use that Van Dyke brown glaze again. And you don't have to use Dixie Belle. You can use any brown glaze, but um, that's just what I have. So um, I just brush that on and wipe it off until I get enough off. Uh, now, if I hadn't used a slick stick on this, then when I went to to uh, wipe this off, I would probably be wiping some paint off also. And sometimes that's a good thing if you want to distress your item, but I, I don't want this one distressed, so it wouldn't be. But since I used that slick stick, I didn't have that issue. And you may be disappointed that that's all that I'm doing to these, but like I said, I'm doing them for myself, and that's just what, what I wanted. And you can see here the difference that that glaze made in this color. It just changes it up completely, and I just really like the look of it much better. And then for the last item or items, um, I've done these pretty recently, and uh, but I had uh, I've sold out of my book pumpkins, and I had a lady come in and 
bought several of them uh, for her child's teachers. And so, because uh, she thought the book was appropriate, so she bought several of them and needed several more. So, out of necessity, I'm making some more of these books. And these Reader's Digest, these old Reader's Digest, are perfect for these uh, pumpkins because they're thick enough that they stand on their own. And I really like some of the colors on them. And this one is green, and she wanted a green one, so... Um, I'm going to keep it green, but I'm adding some different shades so that it has some dimension and color. And I needed to paint this spine anyway, so uh, I'm just going to uh, just keep adding some different shades of green until I get the color that I want. Now, I buy my books very... Uh, at a very good price, and these actually only paid like um, actually, I paid a dollar a piece for these, but uh, generally, until just very recently, I was buying my books for 25 cents each at a thrift store, but uh, we do our thrifting on Mondays because that's the day that my store is closed, and uh, just very recently, that store decided to close on Mondays, and I was so disappointed. That was one of my favorite thrift stores. And uh, here I'm adding a little bit of brown to dull this green. Uh, but uh, because I have so little in these books and I have very little time and effort in them also, then um, I only put $10 on them. But uh, I feel like I'm making good on them because uh, I have very little time and very little money in them. Um, and I think it's a, a good price for them, and I don't have any problem selling them for that. So I'm just going to paint these different colors, and I'm trying to concentrate on colors that you might see on pumpkins. And uh, I don't ever like painting them solid. I want to uh, just kind of add some other colors into them so that uh, it gives them more dimension. So I just paint these in different colors, and some of these books I even hate painting because uh, these Reader's Digest, the old ones, uh, came in such pretty prints, and um, but they don't look like pumpkins, and these books really work well for pumpkins, and like I said, you could just find these easily in thrift stores, so uh, these are just what I'm going to use when I, when I can because they are a really good size and a good sturdy book. So I just paint all of these in different colors. And this orange here, my sister actually brought to me. I don't know if she mixed that this color or what, but it's a very, I feel like it's a very good color for a, a pumpkin. And at some point here, uh, where I'm painting these and uh, working with the wet books, because I know for a lot of you, uh, you do things the right way, and I don't. And um, maybe you'll lay them on one side and paint all of one side first, let that dry, and then, and then turn it over. But um, I like to do things quickly, and so I just paint them while they're wet, and it's kind of a messy job to paint while they're wet. But at some point, I realized uh, when I laid one down on the, on the wet paint that was on my paper, um, it almost stuck to that, and it pulled a little bit of my paint off, and I started to really like the look that that was giving. So at some point... Here, I, um, I intentionally lay it down on that wet paint. And you'll see later, it really makes a, a difference. It gives, it gives some texture, and uh, I feel like it really adds to the look. The problem with the way I do my painting is I make such a mess of my hands, and uh, on days like today, when... Um, most of the day I was um, I was having to wait on customers. Um, I have to go wait on them with wet hands. So I just kind of dry that paint off and 
Uh, at this point, they're used to my hands looking like that. But like I said, ideally, you would paint several of these in one color and uh, and you would let one side dry and then turn them over. But um, I rarely have time to do it that way. And uh, I did learn in doing this, though, how how good it looked when I was pulling that off that wet paint. So you'll see here, I think it might be on this one uh, that I lay it down in that wet paint and then it starts to pull that off and that's where I start to do that intentionally. I like white pumpkins but see how that pulled there off and it just I liked that look so I started to just kind of lay it down and push on it and let it pull some of it up intentionally and I did that with all of them and it really did make a big difference so if I hadn't been as haphazard as I am about painting uh, I might not have found that out so I just kind of do that with each of these and uh, and then obviously I have to let that dry before I can move on to the next step and where I get paint on some of the paint pages uh, just taking a little sandpaper will take that right off. And if you saw my other video uh, with these pumpkins, uh, the way I keep these closed is I cut a, a strip of fabric about one to two inches wide and maybe uh, three or four inches long, probably four. And I just glue uh, that piece of fabric to the front page and the front cover and then the back page and the back cover and that will keep your book closed so i just do that with all of these like i said i glue it to the front page and then to the front cover and to the back page and then to the back cover And that just keeps it from opening so that it will stay standing up well. And hot glue works really well for this. And I get the question all the time about my hot glue, um, how I'm able to handle it so quickly. Uh, part of that is just because I'm so used to handling hot glue, but also uh, the main reason is that I use low temp glue guns because I used to burn myself all the time and I, I don't ever burn myself anymore using these low temp guns. And um, the plus side is that they're very cheap. So now I'm just taking a piece of a uh, twig and uh, gluing that to the top. Now you can use whatever you want as your stem, but that's what I use. And I just glue those right to the pages, and it holds really well with the hot glue. I, I don't ever have an issue of one of those trying to come off. Now, when I make these books, uh, or these pumpkin books, um, I usually put a hang tag on them, and I'm going to be adding one uh, to these. But because uh, they're a teacher gift, I'm going to do... Uh, a special hang tag for them and what I'm doing here is just cutting uh, cutting some leaves to go on the top and what I did out of frame there and I'll show you on this next one is um, I take a section of the um, burlap and this is just green burlap you could use any fabric you wanted here and um, I fold it in half and then fold that in half and cut half of a leaf that's still connected if that makes sense but I'll show you slower on this one so again I just fold it in half and then fold that in half so that essentially you're cutting a half leaf here but you'll end up with two leaf, two whole leaves that are connected so I just glued that to the to the top there now you could cut these separate and just glue one to each side. I just find that this way is quicker and easier for me. You could use um, 
you wouldn't have to use burlap here. You could use um, another type of fabric. And if you didn't have green fabric, then you could always uh, use kind of a sturdier fabric and paint it. So um, you're not limited on these. You can make just about any fabric work. And now I'm just taking a piece of corrugated cardboard and making a hang tag. And you don't have to have the corrugated cardboard. You can use just regular cardboard or you can use um, cardstock or you can use um, a piece of a cereal box uh, because you can just cover over that. And in this case, I'm going to... Um, I'm going to tear a piece of um, age of an aged book page and that front piece that doesn't have any writing on it and I'm going to tear that just a little bit smaller than my hang tag and then I'm just going to um, use some ink and make it look aged around the edges and now I've just taken a little uh, apple that I found in a book and I'm cutting around that apple. And I'll also use the ink and antique around the apple and, um, and then glue that to this little hang tag. And I didn't have, I wanted this to be a teacher um, hang tag because I knew that she was gonna be giving it as gifts, but I didn't have any uh, stamps that were dedicated to teachers so i just kind of had to make something work and like i said i found these little apples in that book and i'll cut those out and kind of antique around the edges of them and then i did have a stamp that said thank you and so uh, i just stamped thank you on on the card and then glued that little apple to the side and and i feel like that personalized it for a teacher now you don't have to tear this part here i just happen to like that look but um not not everyone likes things as rustic as i do so uh, if you don't then just take the scissors and cut you a, a rectangle a little bit smaller than the one that you started with and um and you can just kind of cut that out with scissors instead of tearing it. So I just stamped thank you on there and uh, glue that little apple to the side and then, um, and then I'll glue that little piece of paper to the front of that cardboard and, uh, and then put my hole in it with a hole punch and, and, uh, and then here I've taken some strips of fabric and this just happens to be tea towel here but you could use any kind of fabric that will tear and uh, I've tied some strings just around the top of that pumpkin and I'm also going to use that same fabric to um, tie this hang tag on with. So I'm going to do that same process on each of these pumpkins. And this project made me decide that I need to uh, get a teacher stamp uh, because um, this is, I, I've always done teacher gifts, uh, but this is the first year that I've done my hang tags on everything. And so um, I know that I'm gonna be knitting them, especially around Christmas. So um, I'm gonna have to order a good teacher stamp. And like I said, these are very quick, uh, very easy, and very inexpensive. So if you have a booth and you're looking for items that you want to um, fill in really quickly for the holidays, then this would be a really good idea because you could just spend a couple hours and make several of these books. And if you're not making them for uh, for teachers, you could stamp a pumpkin on the uh, or a leaf on the tag. But like I said, it's just something you could fill in quickly with. And if you don't have a booth, it makes a really good gift. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope to see you in the next. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great evening, and God bless you and your family.